Okay, in this video today, we're going to look at textiles, okay, creating your own textile, personalizing uh, the different properties and parameters that are available to personalize your text and make it look how you want it to look, uh, along with leader lines and tick marks or arrows, okay? So I'm going to show you how to create your own arrows, or at least modify what's there, uh, sizes and colors and different things, okay, and, and different uses for uh, for leaders. Look, it's not the most interesting and exciting part of Revit, but uh, it's, it is something we just have to get to know how to do it, okay, and how to do it well, like everything else. Okay, let's just go and get it done. We can access the text tool in the annotate tab, of course, uh, right here with the A symbol, but we can also access it above the ribbon up here. That's For me, that's generally quicker. I don't generally use shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts, but you can if uh, you want to look that up. So A, and I'll click into the screen, and I'm just going to paste off my clipboard some text that I have copied there. Okay, so if I select the text, I can look at some of the instance parameters available to me before I go into type parameters and uh, formatting. We can adjust our text alignment, justification, left, center, right, up here in the ribbon. Uh, and we can do the same with our arrows, or our leaders, I should say, uh, where they attach to the text, whether it's top, middle, center. That's also available to us here in the properties panel in, uh, to the left. And I'm going to change this text type to a 2.5 millimeter text. Escape, escape. Okay, let's select this text and see the options for leaders so select text i'm going to squash it so you can see where the leaders align to but there let's say uh we have the option to add a leader to the left by clicking plus here and we can add a leader to the right by clicking plus here okay now naturally when we're actually starting or creating the text we could add that leader so i'll just do that for demonstration text i'll put the leader on and let's say i want to annotate from that point i can click Bring my leader down to here, put in my text, and there it is, okay? But we're doing it here retrospectively. Okay, so we got, you'll see the difference. We have the leader coming off the top on the left, and it's coming off the bottom at the right. So if you want to change that, let's say, so that the leader is coming off the center, uh, the option is right there, leader, middle, right. And similarly, leader, uh, middle, left, but we'll then have to adjust the leader arrow head done okay now these options are also available in the properties panel okay let's create a two millimeter aerial text type okay so with the text selected uh, i'll just move it over here to the side a little uh click on edit type and duplicate remember with everything in revit more or less uh, ceilings revit uh, walls roofs whatever we want to keep the original and create a new one so we edit type and duplicate okay we'll call this guy for now Two millimeter aerial is fine. Love them. Okay. Now, the text size is down here under text. So, naturally enough, we change two millimeter to, sorry, 2.5 millimeter to two millimeter and apply and okay. And then that's changed. When you do that, as you see, you'll have to change or move your leader lines. Okay. Now, I'll select that again and edit type. I'm going to look at some of the other options. Let's have. Color, sorry, I was going to say line weight, but let's look at color. Color is straightforward, okay? You pick the color you want, but the color refers to the leader line, the border, and the text, okay? It doesn't separate them. It's, they're all the same color, okay? So you can change that color if you wish. I'll take a quick look at leader uh, line weights and border line weight. Uh, change that one to something heavy, five, so you can see it, and then we'll go and have a look at what is actually directing that line weight, okay? So apply and okay. And I'm going to go and look at the, the the global properties for line weights. All right, let's hop into the Manage tab, okay? So open your ribbon, go into the Manage tab. And if you go to Additional Settings right here, click the drop-down menu and go to Line Weights. Now, these line weights that appear first are for how geometry, solid geometry, appears in your different views at different scales, okay? But these don't control the line weight of your, uh, your text. Uh, leader or border you need to go into annotation line weights the third tab here so the weight five refers to 0.5 of a millimeter now you can change these uh these settings here but just know what you're doing first <laughs> okay and that'll apply to if it's in your template let's say it'll apply for, for forever more going forward until you change it again these are universal uh properties so i'm just going to cancel out of that for now and go back into my text format 
properties. Let's just center that text actually. So I'll select the text and in my ribbon up here, I'm going to select align text center. Done. Now, while the text is still selected, I will go to edit type. So we're going to edit some type properties again. All right, so we've looked at the color. We looked at the line weight. You probably leave that at one, by the way. Um, the background opaque. Hmm. Okay, so you got two options. You got opaque and you got transparent. I'm going to cancel out of this, actually. And I'm going to just create, just for the to show the effect, I'm going to create a region, sorry, a region in the uh, annotate tab. And let's see if we can get a solid one, solid black. And create a region. Okay. So you'll see that my uh, text has opaque background so that I can see this text on top of the black region. I'm just going to soften that. So edit type, duplicate. I call this one gray, maybe. Uh, okay. And I'm going to change that to gray. Okay. Okay. Select the text again and back into the properties. Edit type. What do we got? Okay, so we've got opaque. So if I change that from opaque to transparent, the effect is that there's no covering of the text. That's fine here, but in some scenarios, that's not fine because you want the text to be more visible. So if that was black, for instance, you wouldn't be able to see that text. Okay, so we'll change that back to opaque. Uh, show border. I'm going to show you that option. And okay, and escape, escape. You see the border around the text? That's an option. Now you should have something like that saved in the name type of the text i think so that you could have two millimeter text but various options right so you'd have a two millimeter with a border maybe with transparent with opaque and so on okay so back in there edit type uh at the leader the leader border offset this one i think is kind of important actually uh the this could be overlooked and it uh i th i think the default two millimeters offset from the the text i think is too much okay uh so you can change that that's the basically the border or the location of the uh, leader start same position okay uh, is two millimeters by default you change that to a mil uh, one millimeter or less even tab apply and I think that's tighter now the border might suit better to be offset but when it's just the leader line I prefer to have that offset by maybe a mil a one millimeter or less okay right so the leader arrowhead this guy here is set to a 90 degree angle arrow okay we can change that. We have a list of available arrows. Okay, we could change that to either let's say fill box, apply, or diagonal three millimeters, apply, or there's any number of them here actually. So uh, open dot, close dot. Just oh, look, there's, there's, there's all sorts of different ones. Okay, so fill dot. Okay, apply. Now I'm going to come back at the end of this video maybe and show you some options of what you can uh, do here so we can we can create new versions of these but not within these properties okay and we can use them for other purposes as well okay so skipping on as i said i'll come back to it the text format you can choose uh, there's a whole list of uh, formats available uh, Arial is my default uh, text size we've already covered tab size now this is an interesting one i'll come back to that in a second uh, bold italic underline you know what they those guys are okay uh, same as in any Word document, apply. And width factor, one is a standard width. You can put in whatever number you want to, to basically stretch the text, okay? There are occasions for that. Generally, you probably won't use that. Apply. Right, so let's go back to the tab size, okay? So this guy here, 12.5 millimeters. I'm going to have to exit out first, and maybe I'm going to change the orientation of the text back to left and edit the text and i'm going to add some uh list okay so you can do that by bullet points uh numbers abc whatever so i'm going to enter and start a list okay so we'll use the bullet points this guy here and that'd be an option one enter option two enter option three okay now i've already stretched that text so i'm going to just stretch it out a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to get rid of those leader lines as well. Get rid of them. Gone. Okay. So go back in there. Make that a small in. Because why not? And spell option correctly. Thomas. And there we are. Okay. So there's our text block with a format uh, of opaque and uh, a box on the outside. Okay. Now, there's a that's a big gap right between your bullet and your list. 
So what we're going to do is with the selecting that and edit type with the uh, tab size is we can reduce that down, let's say five millimeters or try it and test it and see what works for you. Okay. And it just reduces that tab in your list. Very useful, actually. If you don't know that, your list will look rubbish. <laughs> I did say I'd come back and show you how to edit or create new tick marks and uh, some other stuff with that. Okay, so if we just go in and edit type, no, do you know what? Actually, while it's selected, I'm going to add on my leader to the right there, just so I can see the leader as I'm changing it. So if I go back in, just to remind you, edit type, we have our leader arrow. I said tick mark, but arrow, let's say, this guy here. Uh, and we have a list of options. Okay, I have selected fill dot three. So you got all these options with different angles of arrows, uh, open arrows, filled arrows. So we've got filled 15, right? You got uh, diagonal 15. I, I went through these already. Okay, there's, there's loads of different types, okay? But what if you want the diagonal, but you want it to be three times bigger, or you want the dot, but you want it to be twice as big, or whatever, okay? So I'm going to click OK. I'll show you where to make those, those uh, modifications, okay? So you need to go to the Manage tab again into additional settings and then down to annotations and arrowheads and select. All right, we have our list here in the drop down of all the different uh, arrow types that are available, arrowheads, okay? And that's the same list that we saw in the in the text type, okay? Uh, we're looking at arrow filled 30 degrees and here's our properties for that arrow. Now, if we wanted to create another arrow that's 30 degrees but bigger than the one that's in our list available. So this one is three millimeters. Let's say we want it to be 10 millimeters, okay? Same process, we duplicate, we'll call it arrow fill 30 degrees, 10, okay? Or 10 millimeters maybe, and okay. And just change that tick size from three to 10, enter, okay. Now, if I go into my text style then, select it, edit type, I'm gonna change that arrow first to the, uh, the filled, uh, where is it now? Filled arrow, 30 degrees, apply. So that's the default one we, the, that we changed and we changed it to the 30 degrees, 10 millimeters, apply. So we just created that arrow type, cool, huh? Okay, now let me show you another <laughs> possible use for this, this tool, okay? So if you go back into our manage tab, back into the same place, additional settings, annotations, arrowheads. Actually, if you're following along, just keep your screen there in, in, with the in type properties available and just watch me, okay? Now, I'm going to show you something, uh, an annotation family I've made that I use for various purposes, but uh, if I go to my annotate tab and component, it's a pointer, okay? So if I wanted to point to this lump of text from somewhere, I click here and click into that, okay? So it's just a little red pointer. Line-based family, I find it very useful. Maybe I'll do a video on that, that'd be short, but uh, let me just show you how you can use the text tool to do something very similar. Escape, so I'll get rid of that. So back into where we were, manage tab, additional settings, annotations, arrowheads. Uh, I'm going to go to the filled dot, so filled dot three millimeters, I'm gonna duplicate and go call it filled dot, well, I'm not actually sure what I want, do I want 10 millimeters again maybe, or 7.5? Okay, so fill dot 7.5 and tick size, I'm going to change to 7.5, apply, okay, then I'm going to go to my text, so new text with leader selected, and click and click, and something, okay. Uh, select that and edit type. I'm just going to call this duplicate, call it a uh, red pointer, let's say. Okay, and okay. Now, the first thing I want to do obviously is change the color to red. Okay, I want to, uh, background doesn't matter, line weight. I'm going to change the line weight to two actually. I may change my mind about that. Uh, leader arrow is the important one. I'm going to change that to. Uh, filled where's it gone fill dot 7.5 millimeters uh text size doesn't matter because i'm not actually going to use it and i think that's it is it oh yeah make sure the border is off okay 
and OK. Now, there it is. So if I want to create a just a leader dot, you know, kind of a pointer, I can go to my text, cancel, select the uh, red pointer, point at the box, pull my leader line out, and then just click outside the text, escape, escape, and I have my pointer. Fantastic. Hope you found it useful. As always, like, share, comment. And if you haven't already, you know what to do. Subscribe. See you in the next one, guys.